Welcome to Coffee to Go, where we center ourselves in the seasons, the scriptures, and the holy days of the Christian tradition. I'm Karen Peter, and I'm here with Blake Smith, and we welcome you on the journey. So we asked the question, where is Jesus this week? And this is still part of this really intense um period of teaching that we go through in the in the last few Sundays of ordinary time. It's like the the tension is escalating around Jesus. And so he he's really trying to share with us those things that are really important. So here Jesus is actually going to be talking about something that I think is probably really relevant to the listeners of Coffee to Go because we tend to speak maybe more to folks who want to um, not, who, who are willing to say that there might be some difficulties in being a disciple and following the Christian tradition. And we're pretty open about those here on Coffee to Go. So today's teaching is about hypocrisy and to be more specific, the hypocrisy of religious people. And I think, um, unfortunately, I fall into that category more often than I would like to do so. But this teaching is kind of a, I don't know, it's a way to explore maybe what I hear as a common complaint from people who don't want to participate in organized religion. They'll say Christians are hypocritical. I don't want to go because Christians are hypocritical, Um, (laughs) which is true. Sometimes I'm hypocritical. I acknowledge that. But I'm trying really hard not to be, but I'm human. So, you know, deal with that and let's move on. That's not exactly what Jesus says. So, like, <laughs> no. No. So what but did think... what did the gospel writers say about it? <laughs> the scripture for today comes from the 21st chapter of the gospel according to Matthew, the first through the 12th verse. And Jesus is pretty clear about what he thinks here uh, regarding hypocrisy. So here it is. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So okay, I before you have... start, the, before you start, like, I was going to say, ouch, 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 ouch. Okay, now. Yeah. <laughs> well, my first reaction will be, well, I don't have tassels or phylacteries, so this isn't talking about me, right? <laughs> so uh, you might want to explain for our listeners what those are. So phylacteries are leather boxes containing texts from the Torah, and the phylacteries um, were worn or are worn by men during morning prayer. Uh, They wear one on their head and one on their arm, and it reminds them of God and to keep the law in their life uh, every day. (coughs) The tassels, on the other hand, represent the 613 commandments found in the Torah. Now, there's one tassel on every corner of the prayer shawl, 
And it's the combination of the strands and the knots added to the numer numerical value of the Hebrew word for the tassels, tzitzit, that equals 613. And I won't go any deeper into that. When they wear the prayer shawl, though, the tassels being on each of the four corners of the shawl represents symbolically that they are surrounded by the commandments. So the point there is, is to make a show so that everybody knows how holy and righteous you are um, uh. and, and to, to be speakers and preachers of the law and, and cast that burden on everybody else as if they had already achieved those things. And, and Jesus is saying, nah. Um, he's kind of like the the people you talked about and the people that I have met on the streets who say, you know, I don't, I'm not sure I want to have anything to do with Christianity. It's just a bunch of of hypocrites. They look really nice when they dress up and go to church on Sunday, but then um, you should see them. <laughs> or that, That's not what I experience when I see them on the streets the next day. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and we have a lot of that going on around us um, in our political, social and religious uh, circles. Um, it's not. It's not just politicians. Um, it's it's in social groups. It's in our social gatherings. It's uh, and even in our churches where um, people want to achieve status and power. Uh, it's human. It's human. Uh, we do that. Um, and you mentioned that you have times of hypocrisy. So I'll just join that. I'm not going to list all of them, but I, <laughs> but I will be willing to claim because we are, we, we try to be transparent here, like you said, on Coffee to Go, um, that as hard as we try, we're human. And uh, some people don't try as hard as others, obviously. Um, but Jesus is saying, you know, we need, we need to try because to be servant um, is to be in line with God and and with with the ways of Christ, um, it's important for us to to try to, as disciples, to truly follow the ways of Jesus, which are not about power and uh, status or oppressing others. They're about humility and servanthood and compassion and mercy and offering grace and and all of those things, which are contrary <laughs> to the political world the social world, and even religious world that oppresses and mistreats and impoverishes others um, for the sake of saying that they're better than or um, they have more authority. Discipleship isn't about status. Um, and so we shouldn't try to fit discipleship into cultural norms. Rather, it's more important that we allow discipleship to reshape the culture into uh, something that brings blessing for others. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of criticism uh, in the conversations about hypocrisy that, you know, Christianity and discipleship is just trying to, to um, submit to culture. Um, but the reality is discipleship ought to work to transform culture because it's a different way, different way of living in the world. Well, it turns our cultural, what we think is normal in our culture upside down, because our culture, what's normal is to climb the ladder. It's to get right. to the next highest position. It's to have some kind of power or control or authority over others. And and it's so steeped into who we are that we don't even notice that that's kind of what we do. But it, it goes along with the, you know, the coveting that that people you think about don't covet what your neighbor has well we tend to covet status and yeah. we we want that that's our our cultural norm and so what i'm hearing you say and reading here is that no it's a matter of changing that norm so that what we try to achieve is a deeper sense of servanthood yeah so, so a great example for me we talk about humility and I think in normal culture, humility is seen as a weakness. Yeah, yeah. So not something that we would aspire to. When our discipleship is consistent, hopefully we can begin to change the norm of culture. Yeah, so, yeah. So we have to consider then, you know, this week as we're thinking about that, a, a question for us to consider would be what part of 
following the way of Jesus, that humility and mercy and compassion and servanthood, which of those are the hardest to follow? Mm. Yeah, pick a day. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. Are there areas where our pride of status have too much power in our life? Oh, I was thinking about that, Blake. Um, Yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's hard. And it's kind of one of those things like, what do I want to be known for when I die? And so is it power and status or is it do I want to be known for humility and serving others? That's where I'm looking at that. So do I have areas of pridefulness? Yes. Let's go on to the next question. (laughs) (laughs) The last question that I I would have is, what are some aspects of your current culture and context that uphold your beliefs about Mm -hmm. following Jesus? So I think, you know, we think about all the things we do wrong, but what are some of the things in our culture and context that help us um, stick to our beliefs, uphold our beliefs in following Jesus. So in my neighborhood, I'm on my street, there are probably a dozen houses and this neighborhood functions as a little community where everybody helps each other. Everybody serves each other. Everybody takes the time to check on each other. It's really, um, it's interesting to live here and to have it be that context. That's the kind of the water we swim in here, which is very different than other neighborhoods I've been in. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So going back to the flat trees and tassels, because <laughs> I don't have those. Parts, I don't have any <laughs> favorite parts of these scripture. Those were symbols of status and or knowledge even. And so that's where I get my pridefulness because I'm, I'm knowledge based. I, um, that's my, that's my spiritual way of connecting is through intellect and reading and acquiring knowledge. So what are yours? Um, Think about that this week. What is a symbol of status or knowledge that you take a great deal of pride in displaying to the world and put it away this week? Just pick one. Maybe it's that fancy car you just got. Put it away this week and ride your bike. Or maybe it's um, a purse that has a great designer label on it. We'll put it away this week and carry something else. Whatever it is, whatever it is, put it away and instead put in its place humility and servanthood and see what your week is like to live without that symbol, status and power. Wow. Wow. Well, how about a blessing to close this out today? I think we need that at this point. Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> so our blessing comes today from For Cultural Humanity, uh, for, excuse me, For Cultural Humility by Terry J. Stokes. And this is adapted. Oh, Holy Spirit, the tonic for toxicity and the repairer of fragility, we beseech thee for a radically humble and contrite spirit with which to approach a cross-cultural encounter. Reveal our privilege, unconscious bias, and blind spots to us, and make us heartbroken at the ways in which they are evidences of a broken world. Give us capacity to engage new perspectives, receptiveness to rebuke, resources with which to educate ourselves, and resolution to become better allies through the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. As always, thanks for joining us this week here at Coffee to Go. We invite you to join us next week for the next part of our journey through the liturgical seasons and holy days of the Christian tradition. Mm -hmm.